Hi, this is Don Cowboy Biker Adventures. I'd like to introduce you to Charlie Valor. Good afternoon. I'm here with the Top of the Lake Snowmobile Museum. Uh, we've got 185 sleds in here. We're about the history of snowmobiles. So we've got the weird stuff, the one of a kind, some homemade. A few, the only place you'll see them is here in this museum. A Mercury Twin Track, they only made one. It's here, an Anderson made in Manistique, it's here. Away We Go made in Trinary, it's here. The only place you're gonna see a few sleds that we have here. We have some custom built, some home built. Uh, we got one with an Indian motorcycle engine on it. Uh, we got a, a real variety. And we're called the Top of the Lake Snowmobile Museum because we're at the northernmost point of Lake Michigan, therefore the top of the lake. You look at the outline of the state of Michigan, you see the lake, Lake Michigan, the northernmost point is us. And we can carry on. We have a, a uh, Harley Davidson. Um, this is the one with the Indian motorcycle engine on it. Oh, wow. Uh, this up here is a Honda. We know of like four. Honda made 200 sleds. We know of four. So this is one of four known left. It's kind of cool. Very wow. cool. Uh, this is one of the homemade ones. The only place you're going to find it is here. It was, we nicknamed it the pizza oven. It's got a little one and a half horse Briggs and Stratton. You pull this lever, it tightens the belt. These <laughs> pegs you pull, it would fit in this Model T that way. You pull the pegs out, you straddle it, put your foot on here, and it pushed the wheel down with a chain on it that grabbed the ice and took him into, uh, out further into the Saginaw Bay oh. uh, for fishing. He wanted, didn't want to walk anymore. Um, here's another homemade one. Made uh, 45 miles from here. Um, we've named it the Anderson because it was the Anderson family that built it. It's very unique in itself. Um, we'll walk around this way. By the way, folks, you can rotate your view. If I'm doing this in 360, I'm most likely going to do that. So you rotate your view on your device and look at anything you want to look at. Cool. Now, uh, this is Alice Chalmers. The tractor company, Alice Chalmers, these from here down are D15 fenders. They filled in the middle. Um, they made three sleds. The guy that has this one, he has the other two, but they're junk. So that's the only one, only place you're going to see an Alice Chalmers is right here. Alice right. Chalmers did make a big uh, personnel carrier during the war, but they were a lot larger personnel carriers. But this is the only conventional sled like this that's left in existence they yeah. only made three it looks very heavy it's heavy very yes. heavy duty i could open the hood on it and you can see the w tractor guys like it, the wd fenders right here you can see that's a w and they filled oh, in the middle wow. so the w alice chalmers wd fenders wow it's got a lloyd motor in it it's super heavy the alice chalmer guys love it um <laughs> down here's another unique one this is called a um Timberwolf, it was made in Sioux, Michigan. That's 60 miles from here. There's only eight of these made. Dr. Robinson was an orthodontist. He still is in the Sioux. Dr. Zabelka was a professor at Lake State. They teamed together and we we're gonna start this company. They did start the company, but after like 72, it was over. Uh, they made eight machines. This sled we have here was the pace sled at the Sioux I-500. The Sioux I-500 is a one mile ice oval 500 mile endure race. It's the only one mile ice oval in North America. Oh, so wow. this was the pace sled in 1970. Um, we found this one, restored it. We have the race version in my garage at home. Uh, the yellow one, there's a picture of a yellow one that burnt in a fire. I tracked another one down and went to a scrap yard. So that means there are four still out there. Wow. And I haven't found them, but there's four still out. Very unique. Um, yeah, we got the, the pretty colored ones, the purple, the dolphin, and we have a mallard, uh, snowhawk. There's all kinds of weird stuff that, that they made. Uh, the snow coop is kind of cool. They only made 200 of those. They made them in gold, red, and blue. It's all Polaris Voyager underneath. The Interbar Company bought 200 Polaris Voyagers, put their own tops on them and called them snow coops. So, but it's, the skis are Polaris, the track is Polaris, the tunnel is Polaris. This one actually has a Polaris motor in it, but they also put JLO motors in. So yeah. it's kind of cool. 
Is it fiberglass? Yes, the top is all fiberglass. Yeah. It's all fiberglass. Okay, yep. wouldn't do you much good if you hit a tree. No, no. Um, here's a neat lineup right here. These were made down by Detroit. Uh, Bob Bracey started them. Um, he went with the Raider in the 70s. They, he made quite a few of those. Then he went to the Manta in the 80s. They didn't make it. Then in 2001, he came up with the Trail Roamer. All the same design, the two-track system, cockpits now you sit down inside of it. Um, we kind of like the stuff made in Michigan. Mm, cool. Tried it, didn't make it. Let's go over here. We have another one made in Michigan. Oh, here's another home built. Um, oh, wow. This is, oh, no. it's got some different stuff on it. A bus, seat out of a bus. It's got uh, saw blades for skis. <laughs> um, it's got a Mercury. Mercury did a two-man chainsaw motor. It's called the Kefauver Mercury. They built two-man chainsaws. Well, this guy took the the motor out of the two-man chainsaw and put it on this. Wow. Um, it's made in Linwood. It's kind of cool. The family's been back in to look at this one. One of a kind. The only way that you're going to see it is here. These old guys tried everything. Way before they had a computer, these guys, you mm -hmm. know, the farmers and loggers and ice mm -hmm. fishermen, they were trying to figure out some way to get around right to conquer the snow yes. but um here's this way we go we talked about another one made in michigan oh wow uh, the orange one is the way we go is made in michigan so the yellow one was they're called huskies they were made in quebec they made a lot of them um but this guy in trinary which is like 70 miles from here up by marquette uh, he saw a husky, the yellow one, and he made his own. He made five of those. Um, I have three more at home. We restored this one, and there's one other one out there, and I know where it's at. I just haven't got it yet, but you can see that uh, these guys were talented back then. This is another yeah. prototype that they built. And the story is they got in trouble with husky because husky said they were copying them. So they had lawyers back then too. Yes. Um, here's a cool thing. Here's a catamatic. This is an Articat, a VIP. It's called uh -huh. uh, the only year Articat put a torque drive in it. It's a look. Uh, oh wow! Fluid drive, transmission fluid, no belt. They tried it one year. Yamaha tried it two years, and they called theirs fluid drive. Articat called theirs catamatic. Um, very unique. Right behind you, too, is uh, another kind of neat. Uh, Bombardier is the one, this is a Skidoo Bombardier. Bombardier. This is a 62, but they look just like that in 59, but they had long wooden skis. So Bombardier is the guy that brought it into the recreation world that we have to make it an actual recreation vehicle. Articat Polaris was making this kind of stuff. The workhorses, um, the Bombardier brought it into the recreational. And they were made in Belcourt, Quebec. And then Motoski, you can really see the similarities. Mm -hmm. They were built, uh, Motoski was built in Quebec also, real close to Bombardier. Story is that maybe they went over and looked at one and come back and built their own. That's strictly not my story, somebody else's. Um, this, uh, this is called a Bozak Power Dabog. And the unique thing about that, all snowmobiles have centrifugal clutches. And here's what a centrifugal clutch is. The faster the motor turns, the belt tightens up and it goes. Bozak Power to make Boggin was made up by Winnipeg, east of Winnipeg in Broken Head. It's a little, little, little town. Been there. Um, but this one, it's got a GM transmission on it. Some he would put Ford transmission. He'd go to a salvage yard, junkyard, and whatever transmissions he would get, he would. This has got the GM three speed out of column. He also used the Ford, but it's got two V belts and pulleys mm -hmm. so the way you started it there's a lever here you set on it you push this lever that uh pulls the motor back oh. loosens up the belt there's a lock here you lock it um and then you start it there's a rope starter on the other side there's the ship put it in first to reverse then you let the springs bring the um motor tight again and away you go oh wow and this is mine. I get video of it running. Here's a picture of me shifting it right there. Um, it's kind of a, it's unique. What year is this? This is like a late, he didn't number anything. 
Mm -hmm. So we went back with the grandson. The only way you can actually tell the number, what year it was, is if he still has a sales slip. So we figured this is a 59 or 60. Um, should we go back to the race section? Sure. Uh, lots of goodies. Here's the Mercury. I told you about the Mercury two-man chainsaw. Right there is a Mercury two-man chainsaw. And they'd been built in that since the 40s, and it was a really good motor and a chainsaw because it got air. Well, in 1968, Mercury, want, they put that chainsaw motor in this snow sled. Oh, they wow. built 200 of them, and it didn't get, as you can see, there's no place, very little spot to get air, and it would burn pistons. So after that, in 69, Mercury redesigned it. They, well, they actually recalled them and put vents and stuff in it, but in 69, they changed the motor, and it did great after that. So 68, they had a chainsaw motor in it, in 1976, they won the I-500 in Sioux, Michigan. Remember, that's the 500-mile mm -hmm. Enduro run. Mercury won that in 1976. Big 1968, improved. they had a chainsaw motor in it. Wow. I mean, quite, a, quite an different. accomplishment. Well, I got to show you my favorite, too. Okay, you do that. This is my mother's Viking. My dad was a Viking dealer. Uh huh. Viking started in 1966, right, with this one here, made in Ashland, Wisconsin. And then two years later, they moved to Twin Valley, Minnesota. And they made the square hood, the round hooded ones, the square hooded ones. Then the last year in 1976, they built somewhere around 200 of those. Uh, my dad was able to get two, so we kept one. We called it Ma's machine, and the other one was bought sold locally. And now I have that one back also. Oh, cool! But that's kind of a and Viking was known for the um, six different colors: all metal flake, red and gold and purple and green, black. Um, and I have a collection of all those at home. I got like 35 Vikings at home. Oh, wow. Got a sweet spot for Vikings. So, okay. Here's another home built. Here's another home built. Can you imagine this thing? Oh, Here wow. Took a uh, flexible flyer, hooked a motor back here to it. And this is another one that grabs the ice right here. Mm -hmm. This grabs the ice. There's the motor. And away you went. We don't know a whole lot about it. Um, this one here was made up in Houghton, Michigan. Up by the Keweenaw, another homie. You can see that guy saw a Polaris, and he kind of copied what Polaris is doing. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another uh, one that you could buy out of Popular Science. You bought the kit, you bought the plans, and it told you what to buy. Um, and I do remember right here it says it's got a 1955 shock absorber, and that's it right here. That's what. That's where you get your all your ride is this. 1955 shock absorber and it showed how to cut the ply without put whatever motor you wanted on it kind of uh, cool. wow yes with wow. a plumbing pipe yeah steer yes steering mechanism and you can see how they notched this to bend the wood to no. make it right um oh wow all yes. plywood basically yes uh up here we've got this is our reef section back here but up here we have a home built, a custom built, um, and that actually runs. He had it at our show a few years ago. There's pictures of myself and another young lady riding it. Um, oh, look at that. But Drinks, odors, and everybody. Those are, they're two brothers, uh, Scott and Tim Hovercraft. Talented, they're both in, or, uh, oh, machinist. They're retired, and they come up with some really cool, cool, cool things, and that's one of them. Um, okay, so here's some race stuff. On the wall, you can see it there, it says International I-500. That's the start of a race, probably be about 10 years ago. Um, we have some that won that race. Oh, this, wow. This sled right here won that race in 83, the 500-mile the Enduro. He won it in, in 83 on a Yamaha. Mm -hmm. And then we have this one here. Um, he won it in 84 and 85 with this sled right here. Um, there's a video of it going, that's the first 25 years, that video there. The picture here is the, the race itself. It's well known. It's the race to be if you can do the 500 mile Enduro. They have 30, they used to have 50 start, now they have 34. Well, you can see the starting line. Is this cross there. country? Nope, it's just a one mile ice oval. It's a one it's mile ice oval. One okay. mile ice oval, yep. And the back straight away while here. So it's not flat oval, is it? Well, it's 
It's yeah. banked. The corners it's are banked. banked. Oh, okay. They're really it doesn't 500 look like in that picture. miles. 500 miles, all ice. It takes them, they start at 10 in the morning, and they're usually finished by 6, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. All depends how many accidents and things like that. But yeah, here's turn one, turn two. This is really banked. It doesn't look like it, um, but it's banked big time. Wow. 500 miles. Like the Indianapolis 500, basically. Yes, that's what it is, only it's on ice. This is a replica of the sled that won it the second year. Uh, there's a story behind it. Supposedly the one that actually won the second year was stolen. So the nephew of the guy that ran, run it, Don Brown, um, his nephew, found all parts and pieces to copy one. So this is a replica of what the original one looked like. No, oh, And wow. there's a picture up there is the original one. Here's the replica. And this runs, we took it around the, he took it around the I-500 track about four or five years ago. It's stupid loud. Um, don't have to worry about uh, air filters, it's, do you? No, no, no. Uh, get all the air you into you can. Um, uh, the catalog companies made them. That's a Sears up there. It was made by, um, that one was made by uh, Scorpion, but it's a, sold by Sears. We have a few other ones. Wow. Wards that were here. Um, I see another Sears over there. Well, there's just so much to see. I highly recommend if you are uh, on US 2 to stop yes, we're and not. come in. It's only, what, $5, five bucks dollars, to yeah. get in. And it's the history. Uh, we're 45 miles west of the Mackinac Bridge, right on US 2. Very easy to find. We have a large parking lot for the big rigs. Um, I was telling you about that Mercury Twin Track, the only one you're going to find right there. Mercury, remember, started with that chainsaw motor in 1968. Oh, no, yes. And in 73, 4, and 5, they worked on this twin track. And the engineer, I met the engineer, go fast, turn left. So that's what he was designing it for. Um, you can see one tie rod is aluminum, one is steel. And he's got broken bones to show you why. One is aluminum, one is steel on a test track. Uh, <laughs> but if Mercury would have stayed in it, it would have been cool. So, so how fast does these things go usually around well, the, that track? Well, the new ones right here on these on the Sioux I-500, that back straightaway, they're doing 110. Oh, uh, wow. And the back straightaway, it's a one-mile ice oval, so the back straightaway is not a half a mile, but because of the turns. But yeah. But 110 on ice. Yes, yes. With a 15-inch track and a And you and know it gets chewed up during the and race. And it gets chewed up during the race, and it's always cold. Yeah, oh. well, obviously. Oh, um, how are we doing on our 18 minutes? I think we're just about there. All right, here's a uh, snow buggy. It's cool. Made in Sudbury, Ontario. They kept this design, the same one ski, wide track in the back. Identical, to, well, similar to this, painted a different color. Clear up till 1977. Um, it was a hill climber. It's a fun little sled to ride. Oh, wow. Um, oh, here's another one. We got a minute. Well, we can't forget the Eliason. That's the first. They were made in Wisconsin, and that's the grandfather. He's even been blessed with the first manufactured sled because in 1924 he built his first one. And then uh, in 1939, 1940, the military wanted to buy 200. He couldn't produce 200, so he contracted with the four wheel drive company to produce the first 200 for the military, so he's been blessed with the first manufactured sled. There was other stuff wow. being made, but not manufactured. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Charlie, for it sure. all. It and is we, very interesting. We have a Facebook page, Top of the Lake Stonemobile Museum Facebook page. We have a web, website, stonemobilemuseum.com. Um, check us out. Give uh, us a call. I'll put links below the video. Cool, cool. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.